Hello everybody, Noah here with Learn Meta Analysis. Uh, this is the first video in our series on how to do a three level meta analysis in R using Metaphor. Our effect size is going to be standardized mean difference effect size or hedges G and the data set that we are going to use can be found in the description of this video. It's also the same data set that is used in my free ebook and there's a link to that as well. No download required, you can just read it on the web. Um, there's a link to that in the description. All right, so that said, let's go ahead and get started. Um, in this video, we're going to deal specifically with preparing our data and calculating effect sizes, and then we're gonna save that data so that we can then use it in our future analyses. So let's go ahead. First thing that we need to do is set our working directory. So we're gonna click on session, set working directory, and in my case, I'm gonna do source file location because I know that I already have a set folder in, on my computer that I'm using for this. All right, after I do that, next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna load the packages that we're going to need, which are gonna be Metaphor, ggplot2, and Deployer. So we're going to go ahead, highlight those, and then we're gonna click Run. And you can see it's gonna load those up for us here. Blah, 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 all said and done. Okay, so next we're gonna read in our data file. And you know what, I'm gonna show you what that data file is gonna look like. Give me just a second here, I'll get it open. All right, just one more second. I forgot that I wanted to show this to you guys ahead of time, so I didn't have it pulled up on the computer already. All right, so here's what our data file looks like currently. It's just a CSV file. There are a couple important columns that I want you to pay attention to here. The first one is this, ES underscore number. This is just sequential, one through however many there are. On this case, there are 35 of them. So. That is the first column. This is important for a three-level meta-analysis. You actually have to have this here. It's not going to work right. All right. Next, we have study with a capital S. And you can see here I have the citation of the article the comparisons came from. So you'll see in this case for the Abadia study, I actually have two comparisons and the study reads identical. That is also important for our three-level analysis because what it's going to do is it's going to say we have two comparisons. It's getting those two comparisons from the ES number and it's going to put them within this one study, Abadia et al. And you can see that we have a number of uh, separate studies here. I don't remember exactly how many there are. I think there's something like 11, maybe 10, I don't know. Um, it's not really important for this conversation, but you can see that uh, in all cases, the citation is the same when the article is the same. Meanwhile, the effect size number is independent. Uh, over here, we have a bunch of different variables. Uh, these are just uh, moderator variables or potentially moderating variables, I should say. All of them are categorical in this example that we're gonna be going through. Over here at the end, we have the mean the standard deviation and the sample size for the treatment groups or what I call the experimental groups. And over here on the right, we have the mean standard deviation and uh, sample size for the control group. What we do not have that we need is the effect size and the effect size variance. So that is what we are going to calculate here. But this is our rough data set. So if you are setting up data for a three level meta analysis, this is how I do it. Uh, the important columns, effect size number, study, obviously your moderators, and then whatever you are including over here, uh, you know, I like to code the mean standard deviation and sample size. Other people like to just record the effect size and variance right from the beginning. I prefer to have the more uh, precise data here that we can then calculate the effect size from. I don't really have a reason for that. It's just, it's the way I learned how to do meta-analysis and I've done it ever since and I'll probably never change. I'll probably just keep doing it this way. Um, I like to see all the data. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Uh, we already loaded our packages, so the first thing that we're going to do is name our data file and read in that data. So here we have DF, which to me stands for data frame. I like to think of this backwards arrow as, hey, anything that comes after this arrow, we're going to name that whatever is in front of it. So in this case, data frame. So we're saying read in our CSV file that is in our working directory called 360 sample data and name it DF. So we're going to highlight that. We're going to hit run. And over here, you can now see on the right side in our environment, it says we have 35 observations of 23 variables. And you can see all of our column names listed down here on the left and all the information listed uh, kind of in a string format over here on the right. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I just, the important bit or what you wanna see is that number one, it got read in as you wanted it to is DF, which it did. And number two, that it has the correct number of observations and variables, which it does. Okay, so now we're gonna calculate our effect size. So we're going to call this data set with the effect size information DAT1. 
Okay, so that's why we have this beginning piece. Next, we're going to use a function of metaphor called ESCALC, and this is going to calculate our effect size. First, we have to tell it the measure, in which case we're using standardized mean difference. Okay, the next set of variables is this M1i, SD1i, N1i. To me, I always use this as my treatment group. Okay, so the, the first ones that come along here, M1, I use that as my treatment group because for me, it's easier to interpret with standardized mean difference if my treatment is having effect, if it's a positive number or a negative number. So I, I, I shouldn't say, well, okay, that was a really terrible explanation. I'm sorry, let me re-explain that. I always like to put my uh, experimental group first because that is the way I'm used to thinking about things. Um, so I am going to uh, leave that as the first one. So where it says M1i, this is the mean of the first group. So that's where I have my experimental group mean, and this is just the name of the column in my data set. So this could be literally anything you want. It could be like magic blue frog or something like that, but it all it, all it has to be is the column that has a mean of whichever group you want to use, and I always use my treatment group first. Next, we have standard deviation of that same group and the column name for that, which in our data set is exp underscore sd. Then we have the sample size for that same group, which in our data set is exp underscore n. Next, we have the same three variables for the control group, except now you can see it's M2i. So M2i, I have my control group mean, SD2i is my control group standard deviation, and N2i is my control group sample size. Last but not least, and this is quite important, don't forget to tell it what data to use. Okay, so it says data equals df is our data frame, and this is what we are using from before, right? If you remember when we read that data in, we called it df. Okay, so we're gonna run this highlight everything, and then hit run. And you can see it says, hey, I did this thing. And then over here on the right, you can see that this now exists as dat1. And you'll see all these things the same until the end, where we now have yi and vi. And these are our new variables. yi is our effect size, and vi is our effect size variance. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this. And if you want to display this, you can actually just highlight this next piece of code and it's going to bring that all up for you here. You can see it kind of gets split because of uh, how much information there is but uh, anyway you can see down here in the console that it shows all your rows, it shows all your uh, variables and whatnot and at the very very end of it it has yi and vi. So last but not least I like to always save this CSV file uh, with this new dat1 data set that has my effect size and the effect size variance. That way I don't have to do this step again in the future. So I have a little code here that'll do that. It's going to save it as effect size data and it is going to write it to your working directory. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and you can see bam it's done and then I just saw it pop up. I actually have that folder open on my other screen as well and that happened. All right, so that was remarkably easy and remarkably fast. I'm looking at we were like under 10 minutes, including explanations, which I'm pretty happy about, to be honest. So um, so that said, we have now prepared our data to do our three-level meta-analysis. And in the next video, we are going to actually run and interpret our three-level meta-analysis using Metaphor in R. So thanks a bunch, guys. I will see you in the next video.